Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar about optimizing your network to enable work from anywhere. A recent survey from Appneta found that 80% of employees would prefer to have some option for remote work. And while remote work will certainly be a consideration for many organizations going forward, it has definite implications for IT. For example, to provide a work from anywhere environment, organizations must have visibility into network performance to quickly resolve any potential issues at the same time without causing friction for employees. We'll talk about the challenges around this as well as some strategies to ensure success. But let me introduce our speakers. Adam Edwards is the Chief Customer Officer at, at, uh, at Abnetta. <laughs> Adam, thanks for being here. Hi, Anne. It's great to be with you today. And we also have Mike Hustler. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Abnetta. Mike, thanks for joining us. Hi, Anne. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to this discussion. So before we kick off, I just want to mention that we are taking questions from the audience. Just type them into the chat box, and we have reserved some time at the end of the webinar to address them. With that, Adam, I'm going to ask you to kick us off with a little scene setting and discuss some of the results from that APNETA 2021 Work From Anywhere study. Specifically, what are employee expectations around remote work, and how do these expectations mesh with those of IT and the business? And that's a, a great question and one where we're all living through uh, every day here from the, the looks of our survey. Uh, we thought a roller coaster analogy would be a great fit for us for this discussion. Um, a year ago, here we all were on the left, number one. We didn't really know how long we'd be working remotely. Uh, when AppNeta first shut down our offices last March, we did it as part of a really a several day trial just to battle test our systems with 100% work from home capacity. Uh, little did we know that that trial would, would last us 14 months to, to today. Uh, so initially work from home drove some incremental investments in our own VPN concentrator capacity and to enable everyone with the right license who didn't need one previously for, say, cloud collaboration like Zoom. And at least early on, we were all fairly accepting of a certain, I'll borrow something from the telephony world, uh, app tone, uh, just like our early experiences with mobile phone call quality versus what we were all used to with rock solid landline audio. Uh, we realized that residential ISPs and in-home Wi-Fi didn't really deliver on the traditional remote office experience that most of us were, were used to. So as work from home picked up steam and became the norm, user expectations rose in terms of expecting apps to work the same way that we're all used to from well-managed corporate remote sites. Uh, and when they don't, staff expect IT to help, not just from the next cube over, but across the region or across the Zoom. Uh, so this created quite a gap between user expectation uh, and business requirements and IT efficiency and ability to help creates the challenge that we're going to spend some time on today. So one way we think of it is work from home at scale was really in itself a new application for many IT departments. Um, and it also followed the expectations roller coaster you see here that we see with many other IT transformations. Uh, and you mentioned uh, work from home. We, we did a survey in March. Uh, we wanted to understand um, in that we've long supported monitoring needs of work from home users alongside remote sites. But these were usually the outlier. As we heard from customers' demand to step up work from home specific insights at scale, we really wanted to understand the, the lay of the land, the longer term trends uh, that will help steer innovation not only in the past few months, but for the, the time to come. Uh, so in March, we surveyed about 1,000 enterprise users in the US. Uh, we found that four out of five respondents preferred uh, a long time work from home component looking forward uh, in their positions today. Uh, more than one of five of you moved primary residences in 2020. And this speaks again to the trend of urban decentralization. This hit home for me recently as I interviewed a candidate for our technical support team the other day. Uh, this candidate uh, was a great candidate and he was concerned about location and shared that in the summer when school's out, he spends weeks uh, in his RV traveling Western Canada. Um, and was this okay, provided he had satellite internet access and, and a quiet space to work? Uh, similarly, one of my leadership team members spends time on an island in the summer, usually only with LTE connectivity. So a longer term trend here is really underscored that drives 
uh, really reimagining not only of work from home, but what we're hearing now is work from anywhere. Um, and the user experience challenges that would come with this. Uh, IT still has to deliver key business apps to these new users in new places with really best effort services that are underpinning them. And that's a, that's a great point, Adam. I mean, sure, the, the new levels of flexibility are, are really exciting for employees as they look at new possibilities. Uh, but for IT, as, as I'm going to look to you now, Mike, as a CTO, it, it this certainly affects IT. So I'm curious, what are you seeing in terms of um, preferences and how the, these employee preferences around remote work, how they mesh with the expectations of IT and, and also the business. Yeah, I mean, the, the past year has been challenging, regardless of industry and, um, you know, different verticals. Companies have been moving their entire workforces to, to remote. Um, from the IT perspective, the landscape and, and surface area is vast and hairier than, than certainly it was pre-pandemic and, and before this big move to work from home. I'm going to speak to expectations by digging in a little bit more on, on that survey. I feel it, it paints a pretty good picture of both our expectations of IT and, and the employees working remotely. If we look at around half or 44% um, perceive or are frustrated and they perceive that to be due to their internet connectivity. You know, that's manifests itself with uh, freezing screens and app issues like like Zoom hanging up. 21% um, acknowledge that although IT is doing the best that they can, they're having a poor experience in getting IT to help with their technical challenges. They're slow to respond or unable to help because of their the environment that they're that they're working in. So remote work is, I mean, it's here as, um, you know, it's it's here for, for us for, for the long term, likely. Um, it's an opportunity for employees to have more flexibility in their in their workday, remove their commute. It's an opportunity for enterprises to hire outside of their um, specific regional kind of office office areas. So as business leaders, we need to strategize on what this will look like for us, set clear expectations that employees should have and also clear expectations of of IT and enable them to build out the tooling they need and help them set the SLAs that that match with with what the business needs. Um, employees are asking of IT kind of break this into maybe into thirds uh, support for what they perceive as their internet connectivity issue, um, support for better hardware. If they're a mobile employee part time in the home and part time in the office, is their equipment a set up for that? And do they have the right the right uh, processing power? Um, and then a third to support the the tools to enable kind of mobile working, remote working, and uh, and perhaps some app app training. Okay, so that was a that was a lot of uh, a lot of stats. And uh, I'm guessing there's you know, nothing really, really surprising there to all of you who are uh, thinking about this and are close to this. Um, this is probably just uh, confirming what you're, what you're anticipating the future of, of work from home to be. It gives a, a good picture of both the IT and, and the employee. Business expects the same as uh, before, before uh, the big move to, to remote work. Um, if there's a infrastructure issue, say there's a, um, your VPN concentrator, for example, needs uh, needs more capacity. You expect this IT infrastructure issues to be sorted out in in you know a matter of weeks. Major transformations like this might have taken two years to to do, and we expect to uh, expect it to kind of get through it in in two months. As a result, IT teams were given pretty much carte blanche to go as fast as they could. You know, make it work as best they can, and and not to screw up kind of too badly along the way. Compare that with other IT transformations we've made in the past, much more systematic. Um, do a little bit at a time, move it forward, make some corrections for the before you do the next part. Um, how are these? How are we going to continue to be agile and and fast moving, but but still be highly diligent in in getting through this? As IT stabilizes. Um, their transformation, they need to be aiming, they should be aiming for continuity. And in fact, even parity, 
whether an employee is working uh, permanently from home, partly at home, partly in the office, which I think we're going to see a, a lot of, um, they need to have the same experience. And that's that should be our goal is the same experience, whether they're working from home or working uh, in the office. And I think that takes a lot of work, Adam. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of elements to this, you know, working from anywhere. There's the robo, there's the, uh, there's the at home, there's the home office, there's the cloud. There's so many different elements about this. Could you kind of talk a little bit about what that all entails? Yeah, I think simply a lot of needles and a lot more haystacks than we're used to. Um, you know, speaking of IT, we're, one of the things we're not hearing from our customers is that IT budgets are growing and that IT teams are okay to grow in size and hire given the new distribution of work from anywhere users. So um, we you know, we always are pressured under that do more with less. So given you know, these larger problem domains that you see on the right hand side here and expectations of a, a I guess a business normal user experience, uh, work from home does put IT in the middle between users and these best effort services. Uh, I'll give you one example that really brings home the, the complexity you see here on the right. Uh, one of our customers is a large contact center provider. That's their, their core business. They have users distributed globally uh, with offices under a lot of lockdown recently, uh, depending on the region. Uh, they went from dozens of large fixed contact centers to really tens of thousands of what we call offices of one, where people were forced to work from home. Uh, apps included typical voice services to, to talk to customers, uh, text chat. Usually there's a VPN to secure everything for compliance. Uh, there's often a web-based CRM component. And then this, this particular customer had VDI services that delivered the, the ideal agent desktop, a, a well-managed experience. Uh, so the, the consequence to the paying customer of this provider for poor agent experience meant low net promoter score, and then customers left and churned. So IT is asked to deliver really any app to any user, uh, anywhere, in some cases across borders. Uh, so I, I guess with all the factors you see here, and you know, this usually means uh, anywhere means Wild West. Yeah, and for IT, that Wild West is a big challenge, which I want to come back to you, Mike. What are some of the IT challenges around work from everywhere, work from anywhere? Yeah, the IT challenges. Well. You know, it's not going to help when I'm on an important uh, Zoom call or, or webcast session and my dog goes ballistic because uh, because mail carrier came to the front door. So we will stick to uh, the IT challenges. <laughs> uh, taking a step back and looking at uh, macro perspective, it's not just employees working from anywhere, but also the apps being delivered from anywhere. We shifted out of the office and into the homes. This requires a whole swath of new infrastructure and third-party services and app delivery chains. If we take a, uh, a common scenario, um, think about Microsoft Teams, it's, it's pervasive right now and, uh, and it's frankly one of the tools that's, that's saved us, but it's a black box for most IT teams. If we look at the design a little bit, participant joins will connect to their closest point of presence, traverse through the Azure background, backbone, and, uh, and to the point of presence of, of the host. You don't need to understand uh, the details and IT teams really haven't needed to either, but it can help illuminate some of the seemingly randomness and user experiences that, that you might have from meeting to meeting. So my East Coast team likes morning meetings. I'm in Vancouver, so that means uh, an early morning meeting for me. I have a call with Adam who's in the Northeast and, and he's the host. Later on, we have a meeting where John, like me, is also in Canada and he's He's the host. With each of these two calls, one of us is likely to have longer transit than the other. And given the geographic separation of, of, the, of the hosts of the meeting, I may end up thinking, man, half my meetings today were, were head issues and, and the other half were, were fine. And it, it seems um, from a, Zoom, from a uh, team's perspective, it just seems, seems kind of random. Um, but they both, they both may have been acceptable from a network perspective. There's so many more, uh, so much more involved uh, with the infrastructure. Microsoft has some guidance of this, and it's mostly around you know Teams utilization. And there's the the uh, Microsoft infrastructure involved, Teams application and and servers, the Azure backbone, but uh, so much of it is last mile and uh, and 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 variable 
between me, the host, the other participants. Um, and it's not something that um, just a simple speed test at, at home is going to help you uh, identify whether you're going to you're set up for a good a Teams call or not. It could be a, a regional DNS issue, uh, for example, that could uh, that could affect uh, you, and it could be a, a regional DNS issue with just uh, one of your other one one of the other hosts. You're navigating LANs, ISPs, uh, cloud provider metrics, transit data. IT teams are bringing all of this information and trying to make make sense of it. It's a, a good example of the kind of hairy uh, variables involved, and IT is left trying to determine what what even does end to end monitoring look like, and what what sh what should it be. Yeah, I like, um, and that's just one application, that's Teams. So you can imagine how complicated it starts to get. I really like that visual of the map, which I think is a good segue to Adam. I'm curious, what are some of the questions that IT organizations should be asking themselves or areas they should be thinking about as they're mapping these work from anywhere parameters? Thanks, Anne. I think I think as as Mike shared, the the holy grail here is end to end. Um, so thinking about the the Teams or UCAS example that Mike shared, that's one that we all live in many hours a day. Um, let let's maybe focus on each end on the left and the right. As a as a best practice, we know and recommend that you've got to segment the problem domain into these manageable pieces. So. Um, on the left and the right are probably the two areas that have changed the most in the last 14 months as we've transitioned to work from home. Um, on the user end on the left, remote office networks are now simply the remote network. And these consist of not only your well-managed remote office land and data center environments for, for staff who interact with those services and insights, but also prominently the unmanaged environments that we live in of wired and wireless um, residential internet. Uh, we are essentially each our own ISP now, whether we, we like it or not. Um, so we, we took the opportunity to bulk up uh, AppNet's host based capabilities uh, in the past year to, to provide needed insight, which is closest to the user's experience of these apps uh, and endpoints. Um, and then when we move up in the network over to the right, uh, the last mile ISP, uh, as Mike shared, it continues to be a common source of user experience issues. Um, it, it gets old, but it it it, um, it continues to deliver on those expectations. Uh, the number of times I've seen my local cable company van rolling around my neighborhood these past months, along with my own brief outages, is is evidence of that. Um, and when something happens on core infrastructure like transit backbone, IT needs the context to understand if Adam's Zoom issue is Adam's home office related or if it's something that's affecting all of Xfinity issues, uh, users rather in, in New Hampshire or in my town. Uh, so there, there is context that we can deliver that customers are, are clamoring for uh, kind of in the middle picture, which aren't traditionally well instrumented by, um, by existing tool set. Uh, and then last but not least on the delivery end, uh, you know, we all are used to using a single cloud service like on 24 or Zoom. These can be hosted often at not just one, but multiple cloud providers for resiliency or maybe geo availability. And over the course of a business day, each of our users is running multiple SaaS apps. So in a way, we're all essentially multi-cloud customers every day from the likes of uh, AWS, IBM, Azure, Google, and other data center operators. Uh, so that's the, the physical complexity. Uh, and then to overlay some connectivity complexity further, when you think about firing up a VPN session or SD-WAN or CASB or SASE, the combination of overlay and underlay um, situations can add further and really calls for that end-to-end -end delivery and that insight so that you can understand when user experience suffers and then how to fix it and validate when it's fixed. I'm going to turn to Mike in just a minute, but first I want to remind our listeners that we're taking questions, and I'm kind of curious if if anyone in our audience is seeing challenges along this network map, if if you're having problems getting gaining context into the problems in these areas, um, let us know, and we can we can address that in our Q and A. Um, Mike, I'm curious, what should IT leaders be thinking about in terms of the solutions that start addressing these challenges, um, solutions that don't necessarily create friction for employees who need to be connected and want to be connected. Right. So 
we're uh, we're narrowing in you know in this conversation we're narrowing in on the work from home use case but we have to remember that that's just you know one spec aspect of the overall overall view at Upneto, we've been doing this for a long time in fact we just had our 10 year anniversary there are many kinds of it transformations that that we've seen decentralized and centralized and voice and and video over ip and to cloud and to hybrid cloud and now and now there's work from home through all of it, we need to have monitoring where the problems are, where the problems potentially are, and we need it to represent our end users. We need monitoring to be a comprehensive network and, and application view that you know doesn't overcomplicate and isn't built with a patchwork of, of different solutions pulled together. If I think of five uh, five points uh, around what this what this is going to look like, we need to isolate end user impacting issues identify clearly is this a, an issue with the network or is this an issue with the application um, we think of it uh, needing to have different perspectives in in the view and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more later when we look at, at our solution but um, it should have network path view be able to get into the packets uh, look at web synthetics for real user transactions and look at network network flows of course, scale is a is a huge concern. Whether you're looking at your data center and its hundred gig network connections, and then being able to scale through your various size offices, whether it's a large R R and D office or a, a smaller um, a smaller off outlet for say insurance sales or something like that, um, and then your office of one, which is our work from home users. All these um, are different aspects of scale with your single work from home user, it might be a small network connection that you're able to give insight into, but you're dealing with with thousands of, of those. We're in a world of SaaS, so insight into um, third party applications and third party internet connections, third party cloud services, things that you need to measure to or through, but you don't actually have the infrastructure um, at hand and you have to get your measurements um, indirectly. Finally, you need to be able to partner with existing systems work and workflows. For example, um, you may need to, to uh, make sure your network violation alerts are automatically directed to the best of breed trouble ticketing system. Or we're seeing with some of our larger customers pulling data from different types of uh, IT systems into large data lakes. And um, you have to be able, your solution has to be able to kind of populate that. So, and I hope this kind of speaks to some of the aspects of what a solution um, should look like. Yeah, those are some great considerations, Mike. I think that that's really helpful. And I think what became clear when you were talking through that was, you know, it's going to look different for each organization. And yet, um, there, I'm guessing there is, there's a journey, you know, involved in terms of deploying work from home monitoring across your enterprise, no matter what all the different considerations are, what that actually looks like. Are there certain things that organizations should consider in general? Yeah, so it's with us. Work from home is, is with us. And uh, how do we now make it you know, more than just uh, mostly work? How do we meet expectations of IT, um, business, and the remote workers? And what really, what does, uh, what's that bar? What does good look like? So our view is that um, good needs to be your office. This is the bar. This is a gold standard. Even if this, uh, in this kind of new, new environment, you're only having a few people in the office uh, day to day. It's uh, it's our enterprise location. It's where we've invested in our uh, enterprise network gear and uh, enterprise quality service provider. We have engineered Wi-Fi networks. This location has been designed and tuned to handle you know high, high volumes of users and traffic do it consistently, at least, at least it should. Uh, so that's where our control environment is. Uh, among all the randomness of work from anywhere, you need to make sure that we have um, monitoring there and measure what that is so that as we um, start to look at and collect data from our work from home users, we're able to compare that back against uh, this gold standard and, and get to that end goal of making sure that our work from home employees are uh, experiencing the same, um, have the same end user experience, whether they're at home or, or in the office. 
Yeah, and I'm curious, Adam, if you could jump in a little bit and talk about how what steps that organizations can take. Um, what are, what are you hearing in terms from your customers in terms of what the last year has been like, and and how they can, you know, what what, what are the questions they're asking? What are their needs and challenges? Uh, certainly, and I think. Um... Customers want a single view. They want insight quickly, given the added complexity we've seen with the proliferation of new cloud platforms. Um, you know, candidly, we're we're seeing an opportunity uh, with many of our customers to accelerate digital transformations that were already planned or underway. Um, you know, maybe accepting the remote office. So new app deployments, new migrations, those tended to accelerate in the last year plus. Uh, so with that breeds additional sources of data and telemetry, whether it's from the service on the right, uh, maybe if you still host um, an application in your data center, you're likely to get metrics or logs from it. Uh, there's the desire to aggregate that with WAN performance context to understand is it the app or the network. Um, and then of course the, the, the tried and true uh, infrastructure monitoring, uh, SNMP telemetry for most that exists today in the enterprise. Um, you know, there are a lot of different silos to look at data and that can take a lot of time, uh, more time than ever given how busy we, we all are taking care of users. So I think that really the common theme here is end to end. How do I get that visibility uh, that I uh, that I strive for without direct control over those sources and systems that are part of my service delivery chain. And then most importantly, not just visibility, but how do I use that quickly, maybe proactively to address an issue before uh, a broader swath of users is impacted. And the primary way to do this, and it's a recommendation, is that you really start by proactively monitoring for your user experience uh, at all of your key regions, uh, footprint served and so on. Once you understand there to be an end user experience issue, then that will point the finger at which of these other silos. Uh, AppNeta does do end-to-end, -end, uh, we believe very well. Um, we do recommend users for any app that you're delivering from point A to point B. You've got to monitor the experience of that in real time. Um, and then certainly as issues arise, whether that's a remote office DNS or last mile Wi-Fi or ISP issue or something in the core internet with routing or perhaps something went awry in, in Azure with a container that's delivering the app, um, we can help point the finger. So I think it's really the charter here is to help organizations make sense of the data they're swimming in uh, to provide that insight quickly. You know, our, our customers and our product team call it just tell me. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I, I, you, you touched on metrics and the need to be able to pinpoint, you know, what's going on in the network. Uh, I'm curious in terms of how can IT organizations ensure they're, they're meeting those end user, but also those business needs? Yeah, I think it um, with the end user experience in, in mind here, and I think it rolls up to two ideas and uh, you know, that's really the common theme is the SLA. For an IT team, you, you recall, uh, if you're not reminded by your business, you likely would be that there is an SLA of an app availability or an app user experience set of expectations to the business. Now, those expectations could have changed or maybe um, an application response time could be a little bit more relaxed if you're delivering an app in new ways in the past year. Uh, but there, uh, there is that ever-present business SLA, which drives kind of IT priorities. So you should be able to deliver on your SLA benchmarks and delivery and trends over time. Uh, here in the right, we have some kind of animated screens of uh, one of our SLA reports. Uh, and this looks at uptime violation of performance by location, uh, as well as um, outright connectivity outage, for example. Uh, so this would help uh, an IT department surface how well we did last month. Did that trend better or worse than the previous reporting interval? And then where were my hotspots, most importantly? Where do I need to invest in more bandwidth or more support or maybe um, a different support model or better app? Uh, so um, that's an SLA that IT owes the business, but also we wanted to help customers remember that uh, you have SLAs with your app providers. If they're um, an ISP or a WAN, you've got an SLA contract. Those are usually pretty tight. So use them if they are, um, are at risk uh, or you're not sure and you've got a user experience issue that's affected by um, 
a service with an SLA. So crack open that SLA, calibrate your monitoring stack to track to it, so you can hold those third parties accountable. And if it's an app SLA, you usually have an uptime SLA, um, probably delivered or validated by a status page or other periodic reporting. Uh, so make sure you leverage that uh, to encompass your own SLAs as you deliver them to the business. So now we've touched on a few examples from our platform. I'd, I'd love to hear, I think Mike has some thoughts on, on how it all works together. Yeah, let's, uh, let's wrap up with a bit, uh, a bit more about uh, Epneta and our approach to monitoring. So as we go through this, uh, keep, a, keep a few things in mind. Uh, monitoring must be focused on end-to-end -end and end-user experience. Can't rely on what systems tell you they are doing. You need to measure it um, to the apps through the supporting infrastructure. Um, we're, we're not dogmatic in a single monitoring technology. There's too much involved, too many different perspectives required. And as such, our approach is a little bit different than many monitoring solutions you're probably familiar with. In the green quadrants uh, at the bottom, they represent passive monitoring, combining traffic analysis, deep packet inspection to give you application identification and, and insight and the ability to capture raw packets when deeper investigations are required. For all of our monitoring, we use monitoring points. They're remote and strategically placed within your infrastructure and, and network, and they're always connected. This gives you insight that you need kind of when a problem arises and uh, at the point uh, that, that it may be, and you have the data right there um, to, to get that insight. Packet level details are, are a bonus that can be very helpful when uh, debugging the root cause of uh, an, uh, a connection issue or, or an application issue. And then above that, in blue, is the apt active monitoring. AppNeta is um, constantly exercising your networks and your critical apps in just the right ways from a user to the apps, kind of true end to end. And we're doing so in such a way that it doesn't provide load on your network that would impact uh, the delivery of other, other applications. Um, network paths on the uh, top left, that's the foundation of, of delivering your applications. All the standard KPIs you'd expect, like loss, latency, jitter, but we all add to that um, total and utilize network capacity. And we're able to answer questions is QoS being altered anywhere along the path from uh, one endpoint to the other endpoint? So as you evolve your, your network and make some of these transformations, how is this affecting your application delivery? Finally, web synthetics on the top right, this builds upon the core network monitoring, um, giving you proactive monitoring of your critical SaaS apps using your apps, just like a, a user would kind of navigating, navigating through them and identifying you know, continuously monitoring and identifying when they're slowing down and and where they're where they're slowing down is the issue with the the browser, the server, or the network. Again, kind of com compartmentalizing uh, those to uh, to help you narrow down the problem. So we spent some time talking about work from anywhere. It's unique in many ways, different uh, different challenge. It's just one of the use cases in the overall network and application monitoring footprint. Um, you need multiple perspectives, and that's why we have network web flow and packets. And you need to be able to scale from 100 gig data center down to your uh, thousands of work from home users. And that's kind of what 4D monitoring brings us. It brings us that, that scalability and that end to end insight. That's, that's great. I, I love that overall picture. Um, and You've left us. You've both left us some time for Q and A, so that's great. Um, I want to start off with a great question, um, and I'm not sure if Adam or Mike, you want to jump in first. But um, one of our listeners is asking if there are any specific areas where you see businesses lagging in terms of optimizing their networks for remote work. Uh, this is Adam. I can I can take that in. Um, feel free to to chime in, Mike. I I think um, I think the shortfall that we're seeing is primarily around making sure end users feel supported by by IT. I'd say not not all organizations have fully embraced the end user domain as a as a monitoring imperative, and 
I think that's the the primary area of, of lag I see. Uh, this can result in users feeling like they're they're not being heard when there's an issue. Um, if Mike has a, a bad Zoom, uh, you know, two or three times in a row, what happens when Mike calls uh, Jason and IT? Um, you know, hearing, well, just take, call your ISP twice, hold, get a truck roll or two, and then call me in the morning doesn't doesn't really promote the, the idea of trust. Um, but in some cases, it's all IT can do without the type of visibility that supports the full spectrum uh, work from home package. So I say that's the, the top of mind one. Yeah, I agree, Adam. And I think we're seeing that uh, anecdotally through um, some of the customers and that we're engaging with is, uh, you know, getting a large part of their their workforce actually have monitoring in place for for work from home to have that that visibility from from their workstation. So IT has a, you know, a chance to a chance to help out, a chance to maybe be a bit proactive, but certainly be able to to dig in and help them find the root the root cause. So, Mike, I think this next question is more geared for you. Um, but again, Adam, feel free to jump in. Um, you know, we've had a year of work from home under our belts. Um, this person is wondering what has Epneta um, adjusted over the past year to support the work from anywhere mission? Right. So. The biggest, uh, the the first thing that that uh, we really re revamped was making sure we had the visibility at the workstation, at the uh, Mac and Windows, for example, at those at those workstations. We've been investing in our monitoring points in all different types of form factors, from um, data centers that can have very high capacity, deal with very high capacity networks, to smaller offices that need, you know, four different SSID connections to. To be able to monitor from a single monitoring point, and then into into the cloud with containers and and uh, and virtual uh, VM uh, monitoring points, but we had to we had to reboot our uh, Windows and Mac monitoring points to make sure that we could get that that kind of visibility, and that was uh, a fun project through through uh, last year bringing those capabilities that we've had in the other monitoring points to our uh, Windows and Mac, and that laid the foundation for us to kind of go further. And if we think about scale, we've uh, done a bunch of improvements with the application to allow you to view, filter, uh, tag, and basically map your organization model model onto your um, onto your model mo monitoring model, or or vice versa. Make sure that your monitoring is matching your your organization, um, and that allows you to slice and and kind of dice your views to to look at. Uh, at users in in different geo regions or different departments, and make sure that uh, they have the the performance that they need, and you have the the insight that that you need. Finally, we've recently released um, several new dashboards, uh, giving a view into your application application quality, your web application performance, um, a map, a geo map showing your uh, your current network and and your how it's matching your your service SLAs, and finally uh, a tree map which really allows you to fine tune kind of what you're looking at and and get a real uh, view of of how you're uh, matching against your SLAs. That's great, and Mike, I'm going to stay with you. This next question is again around around the solution, um, and there's several questions within the question, so bear with me. Um, what is the deployment model for the solution? Are there agents to deploy? Do you also do your own monitoring of network peering on uh, network peering points, or do you fully rely on customer deployed agents? I'm going to stop there with that and come back to you with the next question. Sure. Yeah, that's that's great. So um, our deployment, so APM App, App Net Performance Manager uh, allows you your IT teams basically to have a view into your network performance. How how that uh, the the uh, measurements happen is through monitoring points, and those monitoring points um, generally go within the customer premise. And by customer premise, I really mean the customer environment that could be actually on premise in your data center, in your offices. It could be in your in your clouds as well if you were to push out um, Docker containers or, or leverage uh, Kubernetes to put monitoring points within within your cloud uh, systems. And that allows you to, to monitor your own infrastructure. We also have um, 
two types of global monitoring points. Um, that allows you to do uh, both outside in and inside out type of monitoring. So your global monitoring points are monitoring points that Appnetta owns, manages, and, and um, deploys globally. And you control those to basically monitor the apps you care about or or right into your into your enterprise and do like an outside in type of monitoring. And we have um, global monitoring targets where you're monitoring from within, say within your, your premise, your, your infrastructure out to a, a global target. And that allows you to do um, inside out monitoring without having to own the infrastructure that that monitoring point uh, is running on. So, so there's, there's a mixture of, diff, of, of flexibility in, in the deployments uh, of the monitoring points, both within your premise and outside of your premise. So I have a feeling you've kind of answered this next part of the question, but just to make sure, um, do you aggregate information across customers to identify regional issues with certain peering points or telcos? We're not, uh, we're not mapping out uh, that against different telcos and we keep uh, your data, your data is exclusively your own data and it's not, uh, it's not being used um, uh, against kind of, for other for other companies. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. So the next question: um, Do you have a playbook, script, or workflow for the most prevalent work from anywhere issues? Uh, I think the first step of a playbook is is to have one. Um, in that, that starts with setting user expectations for the key apps and experiences that that they should be having. Um, so um, set set out that as as an SLA to the business so that users are aware of things like availability, um, give users a way to report issues and and so on. So it, it really starts there with being transparent to to your users. Um, and I think the the next step would be to just make sure you're instrumenting everywhere you need to, everywhere your apps are delivered to, and everywhere they're delivered from, uh, and where your users are. And that gives you the confidence to report and deliver on those SLAs. And when something goes wrong, it helps your teams react and seem responsive, as opposed to, well, the app is up and the internet's up, so it must be you know your deal. It's your ISP or your Wi-Fi. Um, go go check it out and call us if we can help. Um, so you've got to monitor across all the infrastructure that you you own and don't own, and troubleshoot with the right tools, so you then can validate not only when the problem is fixed, but what your SLAs were to the to the business and, and the user community that you signed up for. Cool. And I just want to make sure there was a second part to that question. I just wanted to um, make sure we addressed it. Is every work from home user treated the same regardless of position or department? I think uh, I think that should be up to to the business to to set up those SLAs. Um, it's not uncommon for there to be uh, maybe a, a, a critical user, uh, let's say a clinical workstation in uh, in a healthcare facility. You know that has to be up and running twenty four seven. That perhaps isn't a work from anywhere user, uh, but it could be as a clinician has moved to telehealth and telemedicine. So that that would be a maybe a top tier or highest priority. Uh, that's where you start your your transformation and your monitoring and you have the highest most stringent SLAs there um, so it I think that speaks to uh, or it's defined by the business but it also is secondarily defined by um, the solution that's there do you have the capability to segment um, across different communities and constituents um, is there a regional affinity um, is there um, a rank or an executive task facility uh, or property there that you need to segment on so uh, I think in most cases the answer should be, uh, it depends, most likely yes, uh, and is defined by business and IT. And I think that's important that the solution that you're using is able to map that those business um, uh, segmentations that Adam's talking about onto your monitoring. Cool. All right. Well, you guys did a lot of hard work today. Thank you so much for, for bearing with us and answering all these great questions. Um, and we, unfortunately, we have to wrap things up. Um, Please know that we will follow up with any of the unanswered questions. We'll follow up with you in the next couple of days. Adam and Mike, thanks so much for a great presentation. I think you offered both, you both offered really interesting insights and made this a fun interactive webinar. Thank you. Um, 
to our listeners, please be sure to check, check out the additional resources in the resources section, and please visit apneta.com as well. On behalf of Apneta and IDG, thanks for joining us.